bring on the early mornings. The long Boston training sessions. Bring the new ideas, the new era, the new talents. Be the difference. The home advantage. The away following. Be ready to have your breath taken away. And that's what Mikey Lewis can do. We don't believe in impossible. George Williams, his first contribution for Warrington. We're unstoppable. They cannot stop this man. They cannot stop him. Bring the fire. Bring the heart. It's time to get loud. Let's go. Because this is Betfred Super League. Bring it on. Hello and welcome to the home of the Betfred Super League champions as we build up to the new season. And the new season starts tomorrow night with an absolute cracker here. It's a repeat of the grand final. It's St. Helens versus the Catland Dragons. With me for the next hour, I'm delighted to say we've got, well, for many, the voice of Rugby League, Eddie Hemmings. Eddie, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Paul Sculthorpe, who won the grand final on four occasions. And we've got the coach of St. Helens, Christian Wolf. Christian, thanks for joining us on the eve of the Super League. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, good, good. Uh, ready for a big game tomorrow, obviously. Are you excited as we are? Yeah, definitely. Um, look, it's a great way to start the season, isn't it? It's a big game. It's uh, the two best teams in the comp from last year. And... Yeah, they've recruited really well and I'm really happy with our preparation so far as well. So really looking forward to it. So how's pre-season been? It's been really good. Um, we've had a, a little bit of disruption after Christmas, uh, as I think most teams probably have with some COVID. And uh, outside of that, I've been really happy with the blokes and really happy with how they've come back, how they've approached the pre-season, how they've come back fitness-wise. And I think we're in a really good spot to start the year. So uh, excited about it. Uh, you mentioned COVID. It's been a strange old time for you. I was having a look. You, you had seven games, didn't you, including the Club World Championship, and then the season was called to a halt. Real stop-start to your coaching career here. Yeah, it was. It was a bit strange. Um, you know, we were just sort of getting going, and I uh, you know, had a couple of losses as well that we were disappointed with, and you know, all you want to do after a loss is try and find a way to make sure that you're better the next week and, and make up for it, and you know, all of a sudden we were uh, into a bit of unknown, and I think at first... We certainly thought it might be you know, a couple of weeks that we were, we were stopping the season for and, and we we're going to get going again and you know, not too far down the track, but uh, the weeks just kept rolling and I think it ended up about 15, 16 weeks. So it was a strange time, but yeah, we got through that and had a really good year to finish. So um, yeah, it all ended well. Well, I mean, that grand final was unbelievable uh, against Wigan. You commentated on quite a few. You didn't commentate on that one, no? No. <laughs> that was one of the best grand finals I've seen. It was sensational. It really was. I mean, the last minute, the last second of the game, and it all went down to, to that try from uh, the man who should be the headline act here now at St. Helens. I'm sure you're trying to keep the lid on it a little bit, Christian, as far as that's concerned. But, He's got you know, the number one shirt now. <laughs> well, I know he has. That's a fantastic thing for him. And he, he has to, doesn't he? Because uh, Lachlan Cooter has gone. Um, I, I, can I just ask you, you you've won this thing now the club has three years in a row do, do you ever talk about four in the pre-season build-up do you ever think everyone else we, yeah we're all talking <laughs> about it do you mention it at all no look it's been very little in, in, in terms of our discussions and we certainly know it's there like you can't go anywhere or you can't not realize what the players have achieved um you know, it's a real privilege to be in the position that we're all in and, and particularly for the hard work that the players have put in so they're very aware of you know, what's in front and what opportunities there, but it's not something we've discussed much at all, no. Yeah, I'm sure you don't, because, I mean, that's what coaches and managers of football teams, they, they all do. They, try and, they do try and keep the lid on expectation. I know your chief executive does. <laughs> we, we, did the, we did the walk for Steve Prescott last year uh, at Far El Cares, and y you were on course for winning everything. <laughs> and Mike said, oh, no, don't start that. Now, don't start talking like that. We can't win every game, you know. It's impossible. And it is, to be fair, it is. But you went, you went very close very close to it in every game. It was a fantastic season, wasn't it? And they, they say, don't they, when you're on the top, you should change things about, you should recruit a bit more, you should just change things up. You're doing that and you've got some ex exciting young players that are going to come through this year, I'm sure. I mean, we've mentioned one already. Lewis Dodd is another, you know. They've shown what they can do. You must have high expectations of these two. Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah, the two guys, or well, Jack Wellsby and, and Lewis Todd, are two guys that we've had in the system for a long time, and yeah, they've been in and around first grade for the last couple of years since I've been here, and we certainly know on their talent, and, and we get to see firsthand every week 
And we do 13 on 13 and they're in our, our second, so to speak, and they're, they're carving up the first team at times. So we've certainly been aware of what they're capable of and it's a different a different thing, I suppose, having that potential but being able to step in the role and handle the pressure and, and being able to perform at that level. And uh, we knew if we nurtured them right and sort of brought them through right and uh, you know, gave them plenty of opportunities but without putting too much pressure on or too much expectation on that they're going to come good and that's exactly what they've done. And it's a real credit to those two young men. They're, uh, they're outstanding young men. You know, the way they carry themselves, the people they are, the way they work, the way they train, the way they fit in with what we're doing. They're a, they're a real pre- pleasure to coach and uh, they've got long and, and very successful careers ahead of them. I'm sure they have. I mean, you talk about long and successful careers. We can't not talk about the man. <laughs> James Roby. I mean, Kieran Cunningham, he was a legend. His, his statue was outside the ground. James Roby, I mean, he just keeps going and going. And, and he, he, you know, he, he looks younger and younger every year, doesn't he? And, and he looks fitter and fitter. I think there's, uh, I think there's talk already as well about, you know, it might not be Roby's last season as well. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's 36. How's he been pre-season? He's been outstanding. Um, the first year I come, he, he actually had a, you know, some, some dramas around a groin injury and it was a really difficult one to diagnose and, and actually took a, or took basically his whole pre-season away. And, uh, I think he came back into play. I think his first game actually back was the, 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 uh, the World Club Challenge that year. and uh, It knocked him around a little bit. And I think at that stage he was probably having some doubts about how much longer he'd play. But once we figured out what was going on there and, and got that right and got him back playing, he obviously finished the year really well. Um, he looked like he hadn't missed anything and he certainly didn't show his age in that, that grand final in 2020. I think he made 60-something tackles and was outstanding um, and, and very deserved a winner there as well. And um, you know, Last year, he had an outstanding pre-season. He looked really good. He was fit. He was healthy. Um, and he had a really good year again off the back of that and played just as well, I thought, in a grand final. And you know, This year, he's, he's got a real spring in his step. He's, he's still right at the front of the conditioning. You know, he's up there competing with guys like Lewis Dodd who are you know, extremely fast and extremely fit and 16 years um, younger and, and a few years <laughs> younger that's right and uh, yeah he's out in front competing with those guys and wanting to beat those guys and, and that's what makes him such a special player he's you know, he's obviously elite fitness wise he's a real competitor he's tough he's skillful he's got everything that you want for a player in that position and you know, I'd heard plenty about him before I come over here obviously but to come over and you know, be able to work with him and be able to deal with him and, and see how he carries himself and and see how he leads the group. You know, why has this group had so much success? The man who's leading him is a, is a big, big part of that success and a big, big part of the, the culture that the club's got and, and a real driver for that. So I've said in the media before, he's the best leader that I've dealt with and there's no doubt there whatsoever. Do you think the, the COVID situation, that players like James Roby, it's, it's, it's helped them? Obviously, I don't think the, the kind of player James Roby, the career he's had, will never have done two or three months with, without the, the contact, the impact that he obviously didn't have in, in them few months. And, and I've, I've, I've seen reports of, of Rob's you know, saying that I think it did him, certainly did him good in the, in the long term. Well, I think you're exactly right. I, I think it did him a lot of good in the long term, to be honest. And as I said, he'd had a really disruptive pre-season. He had a really difficult end of 2019 as well with the same injury. And uh, being able to, uh, and, and you know, what we quite often do, you want your best players on the park, so you're really pushing the boundaries in terms of trying to get them back on the field, and they're not necessarily physically at their best when they come back on the field at times. And you know, I think that break when it came and, and the length of time that it, it was gave a guy like him who's a little bit older as well, you know, gave his body probably the first break, a uh, genuine break like that, as you said, for a number of years. And yeah, mentally, it's a freshen up. Physically, it's a freshen up. It's a chance to really work on your body. And I think he's a really good example of who it did benefit. But yeah. I'd go as far as saying that a lot of our older, more experienced players, and in particular the guys who played a lot of international for a number of years, you, you don't get a break and you don't get a chance to work on your body. And I think it did a lot of them a real good. Do you think, as I'll bring you in again, Scully, do you think there's an element as well that James Roby probably realised having that break, appreciate what he's got? I, you know, I've spoken to a few snooker players, like Mark Williams, wasn't enjoying the snooker so much. Had that break, couldn't play. He was like, I want to carry on playing. Yeah, I, I, think, keep I playing. think, like Christian mm-hmm. said, then, as much as the physical side of it, the, the mental side, yeah. just to be able to not switch off because you know the way James is, that he'll, he'll, he'll have been training, but he'll, he'll have been, you know, moderate, you know, maintenance. But just, to, just to, to be able to freshen up and have that break, you know, without games, without intense team training that he's had for 20 years. 
Uh, and like you say, you know, the, the back-to-back with international football as well. Yeah. You're literally rolling one season into another. And while we're talking about COVID, unfortunately, obviously you had lots of games behind closed doors. What it has proved, sport is nothing without fans, is it? No, you're right. Look, last year... Uh, I mean, that amazing grand final. I mean, yeah. it was, you know, Jack Wellsby, but, you know, it wasn't a soul there, unfortunately. Yeah, no, and th- that's unfortunate. And, you know, that type of game and the way it finished and, and who, you know, the two teams playing on the night, that would have been an absolutely amazing atmosphere and, and the roof would have come off the place at the end. And, you know, that would have been outstanding to be a part of. And it was anyway, without the crowds. But, you know, a real pivotal moment for me and, and something that I'll always remember was that last year, our first home game here. And it was capped crowds of 4,000, so it wasn't a massive crowd. But just the Some noise, job, the appreciation, yeah. the, the feeling of having fans back and how loud it was, was, was outstanding. And then what about leading them out at Old Trafford? That must have been very, very special. Yeah, it was. It was great. And, you know, we get, the, uh, we, we get to lead them out at our end as well in front of all our fans. And, um, you know, it, it is outstanding. And, again, that's something I remember forever. And you know, just uh, walking out, you know, Old Trafford obviously is a... You know, a pitch that everyone's familiar with, and, and that you know, includes people in Australia. And um, you know, walking out in front of our fans, and the fans here are just—they're you know, so great as well. You know, the, the, the way they sing songs and really get into the game and really create an atmosphere uh, is something special that the game's got over here. And you know, we don't really enjoy that in Australia, so it's great to come over and experience it. There's no pressure on you, Christian, but um, <clears throat> you've got to do it again this year, <laughs> and you've got to send Roby away if he does finish his career, although as Paul rightly says there's talk that he might not, you've got to send him away a winner again, you've got to make it it was a three-peat last year wasn't it, you've got to make it a four-peat this the, year, the historic four. the historic, yes, no never ever done been in done the Super League era, before what a, what a way to finish any career that would be for him oh, it'd be great, um, and, and very deserved to be honest with you know, what he's given the game and the way he's performed for so long you'd love to see him go out a winner and, and there's no guarantees there, there's no such thing as fairy tales and you know, everyone would love one, but you've got to work really, really hard and you've got to have a lot of things go your way to get that as well. But you know, one thing I do know about this group is they're going to give themselves the absolute best chance. They've worked really hard through a pre-season. They're in a really good position to start the year. We're going to have ups and downs because every season's tough and you, know, you do have things that are challenges throughout the year, but they're going to be up for the fight and they've shown that fight again. But the fact that they've won it so many times and the fact that they are, I think, recognised now as the most successful club that the Super League has ever produced, they don't tire of it. They want more and more. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that's exactly what I'm saying. And that's what makes special groups. And Scully's been a, a part of some special groups here as well. And Well, he won and it four th- times as well. Yeah, and they're special groups because <laughs> success doesn't get boring. You know, they want to keep working towards it. They want to keep winning. Yeah, um, I think it's the only time and gets boring, doesn't it? I think the more the more <laughs> success you have, the, the greedier you get. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a case of that. Let's just turn our attention now to tomorrow night's opponents, if that's okay. And let's hear from the Catlands coach, Steve McNamara. Uh, with every season, uh, you sort of debrief. You look at what you've done well and what you've not done so well. Uh, things you want to keep, things you want to change. Um, so when you talk about achievements, you know, we didn't, you know, we, we obviously finished top of the of the regular season at the top, but we missed out on, you know, two of the main trophies, which were up for grabs, the Challenge Cup and the Super League one. So quite clearly there's room for improvement for us, but, um, you know, satis- satisfied in terms of that, probably our second year on the run, that we've shown consistency throughout in the league. You know, we finished in the top four the year before and then we at the top this year round. So, um, so yeah, just, uh, just really, just like any other season, just assess it, look at it. What do we want to keep? What do we want to improve on? And, and let's go. Um, you know, obviously the three players you know the, we recruited with you know they've, they've all won NRL grand finals. Have been involved in the top end games. They've seen it. They've felt it. They've smelled it. They understand what it takes to uh, to actually get there, which is the main thing. You know, uh, getting there and winning there is important. But for clubs to understand how to get there, first and foremost, is important. We've seen many teams in the competition. Uh, in the Super League competition I've got to a grand final and not managed to get back there again for a long period of time so bringing those players in is important for us but I think the growth of our younger players is the thing that's most impressive for me I thought they showed great growth last season um, you know, at the start of the season none of us were sure you, you weren't sure we weren't sure exactly how we would go but those young players showed tremendous growth and in the off season I've seen that growth continue so yeah it's great that we've managed to add a little bit to the top end of our squad 
but the bottom end of our squad has has, has risen rapidly. I think the gap between uh, our marquee players, as you as you said it there, in terms of not financially, but the the ones that you all talk about, and the bottom end players, that gap has narrowed, and that makes us a stronger squad uh, on paper. If if we're prepared to work as hard as we have worked over the last few years to uh, to try and get success. So it's a repeat of the uh, grand final. Of course, St Helens lifted a trophy, but that was a tough final, wasn't it? Twelve ten. It was a very tough game. It was everything I think you want in a grand final. It was two really good teams. Uh, both played good footy and you know, both really you know, physical and relentless and uh, just a great game of footy and, and with its ups and downs as well. So, as I said, exactly what you want and uh, what I'd expect tomorrow night as well. Uh, look, I know you don't like losing any matches, but did what happened at Magic help the team yeah, in, look, the, in the build-up to the grand final? I, I think it did. Uh, I think in both years, or well, the last two years, we've had a moment that's um, you know, been a really good one for us to reflect on and, and look for improvements from. And uh, going back to 220, the game we lost here at home to Wigan, um, yeah, that certainly showed us that we need to do a couple of things different. We were able to improve from that and get a different result when it really mattered. And um, I think the game of Magic last week, last year, sorry, was exactly the same. We uh, we quite obviously dropped our intensity and allowed something to happen that. You know, we shouldn't have and, and didn't think was possible and you get a real learn out of that and that's exactly what the players did. If you want to send any comments, please do. And I've got one here. I wouldn't dare ask this question, so Alistair uh, Burrows <laughs> can instead. Uh, where does Christian uh, uh, feel your biggest selection headaches are? Uh, look, we've got a few. Um, obviously, we've brought some new players in and yeah, you know, we've gone about a, an approach this year to try and really build our depth. We think it's going to be a really tough year. There's a you know, to win the competition and have success in, in both the you know, the grand final and the uh, the Challenge Cup, you're going to have to play 33, 34 games. It's a lot of footy. There's a lot of short turnarounds. So, as I said, we've tried to build the depth. So, I think around centres, certainly one. Uh, you got guys like, um, you know, obviously, Conrad Hurrell, uh, Will Hopawati, young guys like Ben Davies, Josh Sim, uh, knocking on the door there as well. So, and obviously, Mark Percival, who's been there for a long time. Um, the back row. Or the second row, um, you know, Joe Batchelor did an outstanding job last year and I thought he was really good in the grand final. I thought he was a bit of an unsung hero in that game and um, you know, he, uh, he really stepped into those shoes of James Bentley last year and, 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 and again did a great job but Curtis Serenan comes in with a, as a big boy with a, who moves really well with a great skill set. So there's a couple, couple of competitive spots there. Okay. Uh, look, for me, James Roby. He deserves everything he gets and he hasn't slowed down one bit. So, James, that's one thing I will say that James Roby's going to start at hooker tomorrow night and uh, I think Joey Lussick's a really good fall for him coming off the bench. It's a, it's a dilemma that you've got here that many coaches will be envying and you mention all those names, not only will they be envying, they will be quaking in their boots because you've got one hell of a squad here. I remember when Daniel left, Daniel Anderson left, and then when Justin left and you came in, we all thought, it can't, can't go on. This, can't, this trophy laden business at Saints can't go on. It has, and it does. I mean, it's fantastic the way, the way this club is run and the way that they, they organise everything. You bring the new faces in at just the right time, as I alluded to earlier on. I mean, it's tremendous. You know, you, I'm sorry, you're under pressure from minute one here, Christian. <laughs> you know, you are. You're the team to beat, you, definitely. And what's more, on our podcast, our Betfred-sponsored yeah. podcast, yeah. by the way, earlier this week, Steve-O, who we all know is the oracle of rugby league, has tipped you again. <laughs> so so I, I can hear the St Helens supporters groaning as he, we, I say that, but... Everyone will be tipping you. There's no question. You're there to be beaten. You're there to be taken down a peg or two. Yeah, look, and, and we sit very comfortably with that, to be honest. We, uh, you know, it's a privilege to have that sort of pressure. Uh, you only get that pressure when you've actually had success and there's a bit of expectation that you're a chance of doing it again. So it's a privilege to have that. It's something we've dealt with the last couple of years and dealt with you know, this group of men deal with it really, really well and have learned how to do that well. And I've got no doubt they can do it again. Christian, we're going to let you go because it's the eve of the start of the, the season. It's I know past his bedtime. Yeah, oh. <laughs> busy preparing for tomorrow night. Just want to ask you a couple of questions before we finish. First of all, Sky do a brilliant job. You're live on Sky tomorrow night. We're going to be showing 66 games and have supported the Super League throughout. But we've got Terrestrial TV, Channel 4. It's a huge, huge shot window, isn't it, for sport? It's a, it's a great opportunity. and. You know, I, I think this year is a really, really exciting year for those sorts of opportunities to open up as well. And you look through the teams, and obviously, I think we're potentially a stronger team. Um, Catalans are potentially a stronger team. Leeds, Wigan, Warrington, all our main competitors. And 
I think right across the board, every team in the competition has the potential to be stronger, and that's a really exciting comp. And then after that, we finish with a World Cup, which is going to be really exciting as well. So uh, it's a great opportunity for the game. I think a great year for it to happen, and I, I think our fans can be really excited, and I think any new viewers can be as well. And um, what would it mean to do it again then? Come on. What would it oh, mean okay. to make history? <laughs> he hasn't touched it yet. He's, He's obviously, not allowed Obviously su superstitious. Yeah. They can't touch it now <laughs> until Old Trafford. <laughs> <laughs> Look, an outstanding achievement. and I'm very, very proud to be associated with this team and uh, this, this town, this club, and, and particularly this group of men. They're an outstanding group. And you know, to be able to you know, play a little part in, in what they've achieved so far, but you know, what, what they can achieve and, and the potential there is um, you know, something that would be very special. And... Um, yeah, as I said before, there's a lot of tough work to do first. Well, Christian, on behalf of the sponsors, uh, Bet Fred, you know, congratulations for last season. Good luck this season starting tomorrow night, and really appreciate you coming in on the eve of the start of the Bet Fred Super League. Thanks yeah, so yeah, much, yeah, Christian. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. No worries, right. Thanks for having me. Our Mansion Channel 4. Uh, let's hear from the new face of our coverage, Adam Hills. When I was a kid, my dream was to be a professional rugby league player. And uh, when I was about 12 or 13, I found out that's really hard when you've got one leg. So I drifted away from rugby league for a while. And it was only a few years ago that I found that Warrington um, was setting up England's first ever physical disability rugby league team. And I just jumped straight back into it with uh, all the energy that I had to the point where, like, I've stopped my comedy career. I've told my manager, like, I. Comedy's on hold. I t okay, I turned down an invitation to Prince Charles's 70th birthday at Buckingham Palace because we had training that night. <laughs> Not even a game. And it wasn't because, I, it was because I would much rather go and train in Warrington in four degrees than go to Buckingham Palace. <laughs> no one here is surprised by that. Which yeah. I really <laughs> um, We're doing comedy now. I'm so excited to be involved in this and I had no, in no way I'm going to put myself forward as an expert. I'm surrounded by amazing people uh, in front of the camera, but having met the producers today, they all love rugby league. Like the first thing we did was not even chat technical stuff, we just chatted about which teams we love, which players we love, who we grew up supporting. So that passion is behind the camera. Uh, and I'm just going to try and convey it to the people at home that have never seen rugby league before. I'm hoping new people come on board. I love the sport, um, and for anyone, for the players, the coaches, if you see us on the sideline and you want to come over and have a chat after the game, just feel free. Don't, you don't need any, but there is an open invitation, you're more than welcome to come and have a chat. So I'm really excited, I'm excited that Channel 4 uh, are doing this, and you said the word a load of times, and it's the one thing that I've noticed here in the UK that's really special about rugby league, it's a family. So hopefully, the one thing I hope I can bring to it is to invite and join all the viewers into into the rugby league family the big inclusive dysfunctional but wonderful <laughs> rugby league family <laughs> so thank you for having me i'm just you know i'm a giddy fan that's all i can say and channel four kickers off on saturday with leeds versus warrington eddie obviously i called you the voice of rugby league which you were for so many people who followed uh, sky coverage thank you now Channel 4 have come. This is great news for Sky as well, though, isn't it? Because more eyes are going to be on the game, and then hopefully we'll get more people watching on a Thursday night and a Friday night as well. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. And uh, Adam Hills is a, is a smashing guy. I saw him at the Old And Trafford. a rugby player as well. He course. plays the game. He's a member of the, the Warrington uh, PDL team, isn't he? And they're, they're not a bad side themselves. Uh, he's an enthusiast, which I think you have to be when you're in front of the camera and you're fronting a, a sport like this. He's a comedian, so stand by for a few laughs. Channel 4 will do something totally, totally different, I'm sure. It won't, it won't be just like the usual, you know, chat, chat, chat interview with a player, past player. There is something coming, I'm sure. They'll get, Channel 4 is a bit off the wall, isn't it? Let's yeah. be fair. And the people that they attract to watch will be expecting all sorts of things. And, and Adam is, you know, as I say, he's, he's, a, he's a, an avid follower of the game. He loves the game. Um, <laughs> outside Old Trafford, Steve O and I were talking to him, and I said, well, how do you think this is going to go? And we'd just been talking previous to this, and Steve O said, oh, they've got to be big up front, they've got to do this, they've got to do that, pass the ball around, good kicking game. And he repeated it word for word. And then he looked at Steve and he said, have I got it right? Is that right? Have I, have I said it right? So it'll be brilliant. I'm really looking forward to it, 12.30 on, on Saturday. I shall be there, be glued to the set. Uh, and Scully, 
obviously Challenge Cup games have been on terrestrial TV, England games have, Great Britain team, but it's the first time a Super League has been on terrestrial TV. You know, we've got to give a Super League team, especially the likes of Rodri Jones, a, a pat on the back. Yeah, Absolutely. massive, you know, massive well done to the, to the commercial team at, at Super League. And how good is it just to see it on, on terrestrial TV and, and now, you know, target a different audience, people who, who maybe have, have, have never watched, you know, a live game of, of Rugby League. And, you know, I'm still to be... To be to speak to somebody who's who's never enjoyed the game when they've seen it, half hour battle is 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 letting them see it or getting them to a game. You're right, yeah, Paul. You know, we, we've it, got a great product. It's the greatest sporting secret in this country. Right, we've Rugby got league. a great product. We've got eleven clubs still to talk about. We're going to talk about all the other clubs as much as we can. We're here to seven o'clock. We've just heard from Steve McNamara. Quick word on Catalans. Obviously, uh, no uh, James Maloney. Mitchell Pierce has come in. Hey. Is Steve McNamara French now? He just He's so settled into that <laughs> yeah. role, isn't he? But he's so settled into that Catalan culture as yeah. well. I Look think it suits he... Steve, doesn't he? He's a, he's a very calming influence anyway. You know, he's, he's a great fella and, and what a job he's done at, at the Catalan Dragons. And, you know, Mitchell Pace, you say, coming in for, for James Maloney. Very, very much like for like, you know, world class scrum half. You know, his game management will be, it'll be second to none and, you know, probably f- slip straight into that, that, that yeah. role of, of James Maloney. And, and Catalan will, will be some team. Dylan Napper as well. He's here from the NRL and also Tyrone May, both seasoned NRL professionals. And very quickly, Scully, me and you have been doing these previews for years and we always say they're inconsistent. Well, they got it right in a lot of way games last season, Catalan, didn't they? Yeah, and for, for, for years they've either got it right at home or they've got it right away. You know, this last year they got it right at both. You know, they obviously they won the league leader shield. Tremendous performance in the in the grand final. Obviously, just pit, you know by two points by by Saints. And we'll go into this season with a, with a, a lot of confidence. Can it be grand finalists again? Yeah, yeah. Can they go one better and even win it? They can. Oh, no, it's pointless. Asking, <laughs> what, what am I they asking can. you for? <laughs> can they go one better and win it? <laughs> Yes, they, they. Well, look, all twelve clubs will think they can go one better than somebody and win it. Yes, yes, they can. Catalan have done what St Helens have done. They have strengthened while they are bubbling up at the top, and it can only be good for for Catalan. Do you, know what you spoke about uh, with Christian then about about the pressure on Saints at the top. That's the pressure you want, as he says. You know, to to have that pressure means you've done it. Yeah. Mm. Means you, you're the one that everyone wants to beat. Right, well, I'm under pressure now. We've got another 10 more clubs <laughs> we've still got to talk about. Right, Channel 4, Saturday, 12.30. It's Leeds versus Warrington. Let's hear from the new Warrington coach. He's a familiar face, Daryl Powell. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you, whenever you go to a new club, it's it's getting off to a, to a good start. And, you know, it's a tough challenge with the games that we've got coming up in the in the first four, four rounds. Um, you know, we've got Leeds first up. It's always tough, Castleford at home, and that's a short turnaround. So, and then the two French teams. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a mixed bag in there, but oh, we're ready for it. I think pre-season's gone gone really well. We've had uh, tough it out against Wigan, and and here we go. We just get get our teeth into it and um, and, and show what we're made of. Hey, it must have been such a, a strange headspace for you, I guess, at times last year, trying to do the best job you could for Castleford, but but also knowing that this job at Warrington was coming up. I guess when you when you finally got the you know the rains at Warrington and came into that first day of pre-season, got the wind in your sails, so to speak. You were a real sense of, I guess, relief, but also time to crack on. Oh yeah, I think you know I I, I gave everything to to Castleford uh, right until the end. Um, you know, like last year, obviously we got the Challenge Cup final, and I thought we were unlucky not to play more games leading up to it with COVID. Uh, and then we we fell away a little bit, which was the most disappointing thing. But look, I was completely focused on Cass and then now I'm completely focused on, on the challenge that I've got at, at Warrington, um, got into the club and it's been an awesome pre-season. I think the boys have bought into to everything that, that we've uh, we've given them as a coaching staff and looks about moving forward now these next three years and achieving some special things in uh, and the potential of, of, of the, the players that we've got at the, at the club. which, which is Daryl Powell, now the uh, Warrington uh, coach. Uh, Eddie, got Castleford to the grand final and they were the best team that year and the most entertaining team that year as well. They were outstanding, 2017, absolutely brilliant. He will get Warrington playing. I'm going to say it before you do, is this Warrington's year? (laughs) Everybody says that, don't they? Year on year, is this going to be Warrington's year? A lot of my mates in Warrington, I'm disappointed he's in Lynn. I thought he was in the Royal Borough, but anyway, there we go. No, That's but he's it. moved from the North West. He, yes, you know, he's moved he across. Could, he oh, yes, been absolutely. Commuting. absolutely. No, he's, you absolutely. told me you weren't posh enough for Appleton. No, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> if we'd have taken him out for a beer, though, you know, there wouldn't have been a problem. No, um, 
a lot of my mates think they haven't got a pack big enough to take on the likes of Catalan, Saints, Wigan and Leeds and the rest. Uh, and, and that is the big fear of Warrington supporters, that perhaps they're not, not as, 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 as muscular as some of them are. I mean, Ollie Holmes will, will make a big difference. Peter Matout here, I think, is a great signing. He's raided his old club for them. Joe Bullock's gone there as well from, from Wigan, I think. So uh, I think Warrington are in for a good season. I really do. Well, I, third I really last do. year, and yep. then they were awful. In that eliminator against Hull Kiart, weren't they? They well, were awful. They, they fell apart. They absolutely fell apart. I don't know what was wrong with them, and I've asked a couple of people at the club what, what went wrong that night. You know, they, they, they seem to have lost interest. They seem to have. Uh, they, they, just, so, they just fell off the perch. Four grand completely. finals. Can and they it, go one better well, with Daryl Powell? That's what all Warrington fans want. They've won Challenge Cups of late, but they want to win the big one. Can they go all the way with Daryl Powell, or is it too, too, too early this season? Well, it's his first season. Let's let's wait and see how they 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 start and how they go under Daryl. As I say, I think I'm right. They'll play good. They'll play some good football yeah, they under Daryl Powell. They will. I, they'll I think they'll the have biggest, a dig. I think the biggest thing with Daryl is he's a, he's a born winner. He's you know yeah. he's, he's, he's he's an inspirational fella. You know, I had the pleasure of playing with Daryl. He's, he's a competitor. Yeah. I think what he'll do, he'll change the culture at Warrington. He'll drive the standards of Warrington. So we knew they had good players. You know, that's why they get talked about every year. You know, but they've never lived up to it. They've been inconsistent, you know. They, they'll, they'll beat well, a Saint Helens or a Wigan. Times, then, they? then, you know, they, they, they pull in a performance like they did against Hull KR. He'll be driving for that consistency, and I think if if they can do that, then they, they've got a lot of talent on the on the team sheet. I'll never forget that night at, at Weldon Road when Gale kicked the drop goal oh. to get them to Old Trafford. It was magical, a magical Brilliant moment. Semi-final. Oh, it was fantastic semi final. And then Zach Hardacre happened to them. You know, they got all the nonsense that went on around Zach, and that was the moment for me that they lost the grand so, final. A good move for Daryl, a good move for Warrington. Fabulous, fabulous. Uh, you know, good luck to him. I hope he has them playing good stuff. I hope they have him playing in front of full houses, and he is, as Paul's rightly said, he's a winner. Yeah, sorry, cool. it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see the, the, the difference he'll have on, on George Williams as well. Obviously, we know what a great player yeah. George mm-hmm. is. You know, it'd be great under Daryl's r- regime of allowing them to play freedom. and a bit more freedom. Yeah. Tough start for Warrington, of course, and we've mentioned it uh, live on Channel 4, 12.30 on Saturday. They're away at Leeds. Now, it's been a tough few years for Leeds, not won the uh, uh, grand final since 2017, that game against Castleford. Is Richard Agar getting things together? Let's hear from him. Uh, well, I've reached for in touch of distance at the start of the season now. Yeah. In some respects, is this kind of the worst week of the year? You're kicking your heels a bit, ready to go, itching to get started? Yeah, it is. I think, I think we're at that point. We've had three, four trial games. Uh, we got another one this weekend for some of our younger players, but we, we're just at that point now where we think uh, there's only so much training and trial games before, you'd, before you can do before. You really need to play to start improving uh, and get some live football on. Um, we feel like we're in a good spot. We've got some crinkles to iron out, as, as everybody will at this stage of the year, but uh, we're predominantly fit and healthy. Uh, we've got some good depth, and I think we've got a squad that that really believes, really believes in each other and, and is excited about getting kicked off. And I think probably for, for most teams in the last couple of years, just because of the, the nature of the world, it's been peaks and troughs at times and yeah. performance levels and who you've had available, but you've had plenty of time off now to kind of review it uh, and put things right. Do you feel settled and ready? Yeah, we do feel settled. We've had uh, we've had four signings come into our club, as well as some juniors, um, four good players that we think are all going to, you know, in their own right, are all going to have a, a strong impact on our team and the competition. Um, we think we've moved the, the squad forward from last year. We've got a real healthy balance to it. We've got some good strength and depth. Um, and, you know, the word I will use is, is belief. I think we've, we've got a team that um, is highly motivated to, to achieve this year. 2017 was the last time uh, Leeds picked up his trophy. And... Well, Scully, you played against a golden era of a Leeds team, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, they were an outstanding, were they? But all that, that Leeds team seemed to, to go out together, and I think that's why Leeds have struggled over the, over the past few years. You know, that, they're in that transition period of, of breeding that next, next lot of players, and I think they're, they're starting to bear fruit now, and I think this will be a big year for, for Leeds, along with the additional signings, but the yeah. likes of... Well, McLeod, Blake Austin... And Aidan Caesar. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you they played that, together at Canberra, didn't they? Yeah, the, the younger players, like uh, Mikhail Ledsky, you know, who for me will be a, a first choice England front rower. Um, but like, Caesar's a massive signing for them. 
you know, Blake Austin's a very, very much an individual, and, and let's hope he can he can show the consistency that he did in his in his early time at, at Warrington. But I think Aidan Caesar, what Leeds have lacked over the last few few years is that constant playmaker. You know, the, the guy who, who runs the team. He's a the special man player, isn't he? He's a kind of player you want to watch. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's an outstanding player, and you know, did a did a great job at, at Huddersfield, and and obviously a shrewd signing for Leeds. And they've obviously deliberately signed both of them. They've played together at Canberra Raiders, but they're not going to be playing together on uh, Saturday, unfortunately. Uh, Blair Costin suspended. He is suspended for one game, which is a shame. He would be he would be ruining that, I'm sure. He would have loved to have, have gone in uh, against the Warrington Wolves first up. I mean, they're going to be dark horses again, Leeds. They always are. I mean, you, you can't talk about Super League. Are they better than last league. year? So what, they finished fifth, they beat Wigan, didn't they? Nilled Wigan in uh, the playoffs and then lost to the Saints. So well, what's success for Leeds this year? Well, I think success is to win something. I mean, you know, they, they were almost written off last year. And when you think about it, they were the Challenge Cup holders yeah. in 2021. And people did write them off. I mean, Aidan Caesar, Blake Austin, as you say, they played together in the past in the NRL. Let's wait and see how, how they go. Conrad Hurrell has gone. He's come here, hasn't he, to, to St. Helens. James Bentley has gone the other way from here uh, to the Leeds Rhinos. Luke Gale has gone as well. So... It's a whole new ball game, as they say, uh, for the Leeds Rhinos this year. Um, I think I think they'll be there or thereabouts. As I say, the dark horses, whether they can win it this year, first year with the, the new faces, I don't know. Do you think Richard egar has got things a bit more settled as well? He's got a, certainly a more solid backroom team, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, he's got he's got Sean Long as well behind, who's a, who's a very very smart coach, very smart footballer, and uh, you know he'll be working with with Blake and, and Aidan Caesar. Um, obviously, the, you know there was that disruption of, of, of the Luke Gale saga over the over the past you know 12 months, and I don't think that did any favours. And, and the halfback situation, you found Cruz Lehman at halfback, Richie Miley was in between halfback and fullback, and that's why I say I think Aidan Caesar is such a uh, an important signing for them this year. And, and they've, got a, they've got a new signing coming from within, Jack Walker, yeah, who's missed the last two years. And Harry Newman as well. Uh, the, the two, again, two outstanding young players. Walker caught the eye so much in his first year, didn't he? Then he was, was injured, he missed all of 2021. Uh, so, you know, th there is a brand new player coming from within the group. I think that's where we say that, that young blood of, you know, these guys were forced on, on the first team probably before they were ready because of so many players transitioning. But they've all, you know... So where do the Leeds finish up? Where do they finish? I've got them, I've got them top four. Yeah, OK, yeah, I'll go, I'll go along with that as well. Top four, yeah, OK. They're in the playoffs. They always are. I think success for Leeds is making a final. I, yeah. don't think, I don't think they're, they're in the same league as, as Saints or Catalan at the moment. But it's yet to be seen because there is so many changes. And, they're and, definitely and, stronger and, than and, last and, term, though, aren't they? No, they're, 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 they're miles stronger. It, they look it on paper. He'll, he'll change his mind after tomorrow night. You are. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you fancy Leeds, we are top price Everyone to win the grand final. So whoever you fancy, wear top price. No need to uh, shop around. You got St Helens nine to four favourites. Warrington nine to two. Catalans six to one. I think that six to one looks big for the Catalans. Wigan at thirteen to two. Uh, Leeds at eight. Castleford and twenty two to one. So a big gap after uh, Leeds in the betting. So uh, twenty two to one for Castleford. Right. Although we do have regular season winners, which were the Catalan Dragons last year for the first time. It's all about lifting this trophy at Old Trafford on the 24th of September. So this is it. Time to decide the champions of Super League. Super League. St Helens have won the last three. Can they make an historic fourth? Well, book your tickets now. Tickets available for the showpiece at Old Trafford on Saturday, the 24th of September. And look, I know people love to not rugby league at times. Eddie, you've commented on so many grand finals. As a showpiece, I mean, that, that ten minutes before when the army are involved and uh, we've got the, uh, the singing of uh, Jerusalem and stuff like that, it is a special build-up to the grand final. Greatest it? night of the year as far as I was concerned for, for each and every one of them from 1998. I, I remember when we started people 
uh, with the grand final. A lot of people said, oh, hang on, six o'clock on a set- Saturday night in front, under the lights, uh, you're killing the game. You I think we got 38, killing the game. Killing, the game. killing him. Ki- I've well. seen him at half 11 <laughs> after a grand final. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that was, the, that was the, oh, do you think it's going to work? Will it, did it work? We filled it within two years, two or three years. And we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that, I'm sure, in, in, in the, the years to come. Obviously, with, uh, it's a television bonanza now that, that this game has got to showcase itself. Bay in sport in, in, in France. Sky will continue yeah. doing what they've done for so many years. It is the, but back to your original question, the grand final is a wonderful, wonderful occasion. A fantastic night. Big crowds. You know, we had madness there one year. You know, madness, madness sang and then madness started when the referee blew his whistle for the start of the game. Just a brilliant night. And in... You know, I mean, I, I would sooner than be at Anfield, but I understand why they're at the Theatre of Dreams. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. Come on, but what's it like winning it at Old Trafford? Ed? Oh, it's, a, it's a special, you know, you're on about laughing about grand final. It's, it's probably the one day of the year that I miss playing. Yeah. You know, the only day. And you I know, bet when, you when, miss commentary. Yeah, when just, when, yeah, you, yeah, when yeah. you watch them players walk out of that corner at Old Trafford, the, the, the it, it's, it's, it's a money can't so buy well. experience. And it, 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 it hairs on the back of the neck stuff, isn't yeah. it? Well, it was in 2021, Mark, you know, when there was nobody there. I thought they did a magnificent yeah, job. I, never did. I really did. You know, they lifted the trophy and bang off went the fireworks. Do you know what, Eddie? I was I was I had oh. the pleasure of, of being at that game, presenting the the man of the match to to James Rowe, and I was sat next to Christian. To say the KC Stadium was empty, the atmosphere was mm. electric with nobody in. Yes, and it was, I mean, it was it was the it was the lighting and just. Just the, the way the game finished. Yes, you know, sensational. That should have been in front of 80,000 people. And, and I have to say this, the second best try that St. Helens ever scored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, gents, you know what? We've done, we've done 41 minutes and we've not mentioned Wigan. Mm. We've got to talk about Wigan. There's a new man in charge. Is Wigan through and through, let's say, from Matty Pete. Yeah, I'm excited. We're excited as a group. Uh, like you say, it's my first one as head coach, but it has felt quite quite natural. The the players have been great. We've got a, a quality staff, so yeah, we're all excited about what lies ahead. A lots of change at the club. You, yourself at the forefront of that, but a, a, perhaps the more more impressive than some of your on-field signings is the coaching team and the setup that you've got around you. You must feel that you know some of the brains that you have to pick and some of the people that you've got on that coaching park with you are, are a real asset. Yeah, we're well resourced in terms of, of coaching staff and also we've got a strong leadership group as well with players like Thomas Lulawai, Liam Farrell, John Bateman, Willie Ison, Sam Powell. You combine that with, uh, with Lee and Sean that we've got on the coaching staff. We've got, uh, in terms of rugby league nice and rugby league experience, we are well blessed. It's going to be a matter of, of tapping into all of that and making sure that we can see it on the pitch. Lee Breeze was, was very well spoken of his time as a coach at Warrington mm-hmm. but your experience of him as a coach what's that been like so far? Excellent yeah very uh, I had experience working with Lee before with England Academy and I knew that we, we had a good connection he's, he's got a fantastic rugby brain uh, I like the fact that he's obsessed about the game but he's also obsessed about coaching and occurs for his players and he he has a good measure of, of hard work and enjoyment which which is important to me and important to the Wigan club we want to uh, we want a group that gel together and enjoy each other's time. So, yeah, it, Lee has been a, an outstanding acquisition and I'm sure that the, the club could get him on board for, from Chris and Ian. Really pleased. Uh, Scully, I was here for the launch. He spoke really, really well. I mean, he's been at Wigan for years, hasn't he? He is. He's, he's Mr Wigan Matty. He's a, he's a great fella and very, very well respected in, uh, at Wigan. Um, great to see him get the job, you know, Ian Lennigan, to have the confidence in, in giving Matty the, the job from, from within. Uh, and I, I think he'll do a, a great job. And one of your mates is now on the coaching staff, uh, Lee Breers. Yeah, I think, uh, I think one thing Wigan lacked over the last couple of years is, is that, that attacking flair. You know that that freedom to attack, and that's that's Brazy's game. Um, I know it's, it's something that Matty wanted to see more of. Uh, and again, you know, very much like I said about Daryl Powell about driving standards. That that's something that Matty Pete's a big believer in. And obviously, the, the big boss man Sean Wayne is, is back there as well on 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 the managerial side of things. So yeah, with Sean O'Loughlin as well, being seen it. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of great so influences. Is there a bit at, of stability Wigan. now, finally, at Wigan? Because let's be honest, it hasn't been, has it, for the last couple yeah, I of think, years? Yeah, I think so. No offence to Adrian Lamb was obviously expecting a change. Yeah, I think from, from, from above, you know, there's a, there's a lot more stability. Um, 
the question is, is, is obviously the, those guys who are taking the field, are they good enough to compete with the... And they've always had some great young players, and obviously Matty Pete has come through with them all. He has, yeah, and uh, Matty's, Matty has you know, worked with a lot of them younger players from, from the junior levels, you know, the academy reserve grade, and, and, I, and I said it last year on, on Sky, that I think a lot of them players were forced to play because they were, they were what was available before they were ready. And certainly the forwards, there was a lot of pressure on them young kids to, to carry that Wigan side, and, and they weren't ready for it. So that's the big test for Wigan. Obviously, them players are going to be 12 months, 24 months better off, more experienced, uh, and, and physically more developed. I think that's the nicest you've ever been about Wigan. <laughs> I've got a lot of respect for Wigan. They're a great club and, and, and a great team. And on, we, we all want to see a strong Look, Wigan. It, it was disappointing last year. I mean, that, that game against Leeds was really, really poor, wasn't it? Their performance from Wigan. Where do they finish this year? Wigan are always going to be up there. They're always going to be competitive and, and we all want to see a strong Wigan. Certainly from a Saints point of view, you want to see a, a strong Saints Wigan derby. Um, you know, they had disruption as well in there. Like Bevan French, was, for me, was their best player. You know, they lost him for, for all the last year. Great to see, you know, the news that he's, he's coming back to Wigan imminently. And um, I think he's a, he's a massive sign. They had, you know, injuries. I was at the Warrington Wigan game and Wigan, Wigan looked good. You know, they threw the ball about. Jai Field looked sharp. So I think... If they can keep everybody fit and keep the best players on the field, you know they're, they're going to be a threat. Right, you've got ten seconds. Where do Wigan finish, Eddie? Top four. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Top four. They're all going to finish in the top four. That's five teams that. we've picked. Eddie. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. I think that I think the the biggest signing for Wigan and last year it was all about you know there's rumours so early in the piece Adrian Lamb would not be there this year. I think the biggest signing for Wigan is Sean Wayne. Yeah. He's what, got what the hand on the tiller. For Matty Pete. Pardon? He's a great mentor. For Absolutely. Matty Pete to go and see, and Paul mentioned the young kids that came through. Matty knows every one of them. So does Sean. And they've got Breezy there, who will, you know, certainly add something. And Sean O'Loughlin, you know, like like Paul, he been been there, seen there, got the T-shirt. They will be strong again, Wigan. They will. I mean, they're, they're playoff material every year, aren't they? If they don't get in the playoffs, it's a it's a nightmare. Well, playoff material last year with whole KR, they surprised everyone and they were fantastic against uh, Warrington, unlucky against Catalan in the end. Let's hear from Tony Smith. We're excited. You know, I think it's exciting. I can't tell you whether it's the best. Uh, I suppose at the back end of the year, if you're having a good year, it, it's probably the best time. But uh, it, It's a great time of the year for all teams at the moment. Uh, nobody's you know, won a game or lost a game, uh, and it's exciting. It's, you know, it's not knowing what's ahead. I think is a great thing. I think that keeps us all on our toes, and we're all hopeful, and we're all wanting to achieve a whole lot. So, um, yeah, I just got it exciting rather than anything else. The bottom of the stack in 2020, 80 minutes away from the grand final in 2021. Whereabouts on the roller coaster do you expect yourself <laughs> to be this year? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, you know, we'd like to be n not somewhere in between, uh, but who knows? You know, it's you just got to start each season over and over. Uh, we'd like to think that we, you know, got better and developed from where we were even last year, and we'd like to be on the upward scale. But only time will tell. And you know, like goes for most teams, um, it's how injury-free you stay, how often you can get your your best players on the park um, really matters. So, um, and that's not just, that's the reality of it uh, for all teams. Um, you know, we'll determine how successful you are as well as how hard you work. And what a job Tony Smith did last season. Uh, Lachlan Coots, obviously their big signing and a great signing. A massive signing for, for Hull KR. You know, we all know what a player Lachlan is and, and uh, been outstanding for, for Saints for, for three years. Um, so a massive signing for, for them and I think one one of my favourite young players in, in Super League as well, Mikey Lewis. Yeah. Um, and I think Lachlan well, will, yeah. will, will be great for him, yeah. He's uh, Could be knocking I mean, on worked, the door. worked with him at the England Knights and you know he was outstanding against Jamaica and, and you know certainly in the reckoning for, for the end of the year. Depending on how he plays for KR, but an outstanding young player. And Jordan Abdul, Eddie, had a great yes. season, didn't he? Yeah, Man of Steel contender, wasn't he, Jordan Abdul? I mean, they came from nowhere last year, let's be fair, Hull Kingston Rovers. I don't think anybody really thought that they would get to within 80 minutes of a grand final, but they and did. A good and brand they, of they, rugby played, as well. they played really attractive stuff, they did. I mean, uh, I just hope it's not for them second season syndrome, you know? 
uh, has everyone now read the script for Hulk Kingston? Do they know what's going to happen at Hulk KR? Uh, will they guard against what happened last year and try and stop this flamboyant style that they had? I'm with you. Mikey Lewis, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding young player he is. Uh, and Jordan Abdul as well. I don't think Lachlan Coote has ever been under so much pressure <laughs> in his career because everybody... Well, no, I he, I he came he, after Ben Barber here. Yeah. Well, people he, stopped yeah. talking about Ben Barber very quickly. I think quickly. that was after, after thing with Hulk KR, though. That, that they weren't under that pressure. I don't think they felt that pressure because nobody expected that of them. True, but uh, I think, I think Lachlan Coote is this year at Hulk yeah, KR I mean, because everyone's talking about him. He's going to be this, the, the signing he's a, he's of ultimate, the year. He's an ultimate yeah. professional. He's a, he's he's a tremendous he's player. Right, we're talking about Hull KR. We could do a whole hour, of course, on the two Hull clubs, but let's hear from the, the Hull FC boss. That's Brett Hodgson. It's Brett, brand new season, brand new chance for, for you boys in 2022. Are you looking forward to getting going in the Betfred Super League after what's felt like a very long time? Yes, absolutely. It has been a long time since our last, uh, our last performance, which, you know, definitely um, wasn't our best. So we're looking forward to getting back out there on the weekend and, and starting the season off well. And you had a really disrupted year last time around with injuries and that everyone struggled with the COVID situation. Does this fresh slate, I guess, we're getting this year give you optimism that if you can keep bodies on the field and get things right, you can have a real good crack at it? Yeah, most definitely. I think, uh, you know, I think COVID hurt us last year and then we had a number of injuries at the back end of the year. So, um, you know, we weren't good enough to still compete at the level that we should have at the back end. Um, so, you know, we've done a lot of work in the off-season, a lot of stuff on building those relationships amongst the players and, and a little bit of the mental resilience that we've trained for and yeah, looking forward to seeing if that you know, holds us well throughout the season. You've signed well, probably the headline act in that, Luke Gale. Are you looking forward to seeing what he can bring not only as a halfback, but as a really experienced head and a leader as well. Yeah, definitely. He's been uh, his leadership has been great around the place at the moment. Um, you know, there's another number of other players that have become better because of him as well. Um, so, you know, if, if we can get if we can get Luke, Josh Reynolds, and Jake out in the field as much as possible, then I'm sure we'll win more games than we lose. And they're away at Wakefield on Sunday. We'll talk about Wakefield in a moment. Eddie, Luke Gale's gone there, and he's their skipper. Yes, he is. He'll probably be the catalyst for them. Uh, I mean, they finished eighth last year, did the, the Black and Whites. That's not, not good enough for a, a club of that size. Massive club, uh, a sleeping giant in many ways. Um, a very hard taskmaster as well in their chairman, uh, Adam Pearson, as he proved when he got rid of Lee Radford live on television. Um, I, I, they've, got some, they've got some good grafters, though, haven't they, uh, as well? Um, I just wonder what, what, what has happened in East Yorkshire over the past few weeks. What's, what's in the air? Because I keep getting told that Hull Kingston Rovers and Hull FC are struggling at the start of the season with a, a catalogue of injuries. I mean, it, uh, no Jake Connor. No course, Jake so. Connor. Uh, Jamie Shaw is is going to come back though, which is a, a big a big bonus for them. Um, but you don't really want to go into the start of a season with some of your star players out injured, and that's what appears to be happening to both uh, Hull KR and Hull FC. What about um, Wakefield, Scully? Obviously, tenth last season. I mean, they knocked on the door a couple of seasons, didn't they, with Chris Chester? Yeah, obviously there was changes in the, in the beat, coaching staff. Home, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they are a physical side, and 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 always a tough place to go is, is Wakefield. I, I was so pleased that, that Willie Porchin got the job as well. You know, he come in obviously taken over from from Chris Chester and and did a great job. You know, there's not a lot of movement in the in the transfer market with with Wakefield. Not many leaving, not many coming in. Um, so I don't. How much different we'll, we'll see in, in, in where they finish uh, this year um, remains to be seen. I think Willie Poaching knows they're probably second or third favourites to go down with Salford and Toulouse. And I noticed before your, your odds reflected that as well. I mean, Tom Lynham's there. He'll score yeah. a few tries. He always does. Went from, from Warrington. Good. Lee Gaskell, you know, injury prone when he was here so often. But a, a decent player. Can produce some stuff. Well, talking about uh, scoring tries... All the games that are live in the Super League on Sky or Channel 4 will double delight as well. So if your first try scorer scores first and then scores again, you get double odds, double odds if they score first and then try again. Uh, we're going to do that for all the Super League games live on Sky and live on Channel 4 as well. Right, you, Eddie just mentioned Salford. They've got a new coach. Let's hear from him. It's Paul Rowley. I think I'm feeling ready. I think uh, we've we've built quietly, and uh, you know it's been definitely a work in progress. We, we've uh, we've started from scratch, but as a group, a full group, we've started from scratch. So we you know we ripped the the old calls, the playbook up, and and we've we've learned together at the same pace. Uh, we've got a lot of conscientious players who are who have been fantastic and uh, led from within. 
so yeah we, we, we feel like we're ready to to get going uh, maybe a couple of weeks three more weeks would give us probably a bit more chance with some of the fitness on some of the players but uh, in terms of mentally and and, and field prep we're, we're, yeah, we're good to go and despite being new in the head culture coach role you've obviously been around the club for a few years you've had a good look at it you must have had a, a a fairly strong perception of what you were going to change and implement when you took the role over. Um, yeah, I, I, I just think it's just better to come in as, as a coach. Uh, I've got a philosophy and uh, I've got a way that you know I, I like things to, things to work and, uh, and and a little bit of honesty about about how we go about our business. So uh, irrelevant of of what's gone on, I don't want to be a poor version of anybody else. Just got to be yourself, and and I do believe that's really important as a coach that uh, you don't try and replicate anybody else obviously you take bits from what you've learned um, in, in, in your time as a player and a coach and and put it together to you know to to give it your own identity and um, yeah hopefully yeah that's that's what we've achieved this pre-season grand finalist in 2019 of course Salford so good luck to uh, Paul Rowley there let's talk uh, man of steel betting we mentioned him early on uh, Aidan Caesar is the uh, 10 to 1 favourite for the man of steel betting Mitchell Pierce we've given him a mention 14 to 1 Jack Wellsby uh, 14 to 1 he's got the number 1 shirt here at St Helens uh, Sam Tompkins is a current holder of this won it in 2012 and 2021 but there's only one man who's won the um, man of steel Deal in consecutive years. Do you know what it is, Eddie? Yes, I do. Yeah, he's sat next to you. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's here. Yeah. Pretty he's good. Li- he's <laughs> lived on that for years. <laughs> no, let's, without embarrassing him, to win it two years oh, on the bounces. Yeah, yeah. Sensational. Impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Wonder- a wonderful. Wonderful, well done, well done. I don't, Cheers, I don't think I've still, ever. I still remember these things. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the interview. Didn't last long. Uh, no, <laughs> no um, brilliant. Two years in the bounce. Yeah, look, Tomkins. Tom, I'm amazed yeah. he's twenty-five to one. Yeah. I was just well, to say, you're tipping Catalan to have a big season, aren't you? Yeah, and, and Sam Tompkins will be a, a massive part of that. If, if Catalan mm. have a good year, Sam Tompkins will have a good year. Um, but he's, he's consistently brilliant anyway, isn't it, Sam? So I think their odds are, are very, very generous. So any uh, any punters out there, 25 to 1 is a good, uh, a good so bet. So Man of Steel bet, and it's 10 to 1 the field, so absolutely uh, wide open. Uh, right, we have a new coach in charge at Castleford. is a familiar face to rugby league fans. Let's hear from Lee Radford. Well, uh, a touching distance to the start of the season, but I suppose, firstly, welcome back to the Betfred Super League. You, you must be pretty excited at this stage. I am, I am. It's, um, it feels like a really long pre-season. Um, but it's come around quick. It feels like it's come around quick now, the start of it. So I think after Christmas, once you hit those pre-season friendlies, um, you are within touching distance. So, um, you know, we're really keen to get off to a good start, like every team in the competition. Um, thankfully, we've got a home fixture, which which I'm really looking forward to, and hopefully we can put our best foot forward. This was a slightly strange situation for you, obviously, knowing that you were taking over before the end of last season. but not being able to get your hands on the squad, you must almost feel like pre-season started for you when you took the job. <laughs> yeah, it was unique. Um, again, I can't think or you know recall too many times um, somebody's been employed while the other bloke was in post. So um, it was good. It was giving me plenty of time to assess, obviously, what was going on at the club and, and looking at the squad as well. Um, and hopefully, you know, the changes that you know have taken place um, will be all be positive ones. You've had a good chance to look at the club, but obviously for yourself, it's been a couple of years away from it. Have you have you assessed what what happened to Hull FC and how you can improve things now that you're a new club? Yeah, I think so. I think it was situational. I think um, the surroundings at Castleford are very different. Um, personally, can I improve in areas? I think every man can in every walk of life. So um, yeah, hopefully we can we can um, make them amendments and, and get better as a club. Full interviews with all the coaches if you're watching on the Sportsman's channel. They're available right now on the Sportsman Rugby League channel. Don't forget, uh, the Sportsman on Saturday is showing a Betfred Challenge Cup game. Uh, Lock Lane versus Rochdale Hornets at 2.15. Uh, Lock Lane were, uh, uh, won that, that last round, of course. They uh, provided a shock. Can Lock Lane provide another shock as well? So that's live on the Sportsman on uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, right, Scully, Cass, where are they with Lee Radford? Yeah, well, I, think I think they've made some good signings, and if and if Cass continue to play like they did under Daryl Powell, you know that expansion, you know, at least sign some 
some fair strike players as well. He took the two big boys, Farimo and uh, and Fenua, over from from Hull FC. And Jake Mamo for me is a, is, a, is a good sign as well. He was he was massive for, for Warrington last year. You know, I think top, if not top try scorer, right up there for for Warrington. And and when they when Jake Mamo played well, often Warrington played well. So, but for me, the the big one for for Cass is getting Jake Truman back out there on the field. He's a he, he's the he's he's a he's a world class player. He just needs to be out on the park. Uh, we do this all the time. We always run out of time. Sorry about the uh, the other teams. The interviews are available on the uh, the Sportsman's Rugby League channel. Um, to lose, no Jonathan Ford. Eleven seasons he's been there. Yeah, it's a shame. Like we we isn't know it? why he's not there. Yeah, we we know why it is, and uh, you know it is a, it's a real shame because you know he's he's, he's earned the stripes, hasn't he, to to have a go with with to lose in, in Super League. So that's a big loss for it's them. It's nothing you know, to do it? with the club stance. It's basically it's Francis. Stance yeah, it's, on it's, 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 it's the stance, like you say, of the of the country, and, and not a lot can be, be done about it. Um, so it's a, it's a shame, and it's a it's, you know it's a, it's a loss to to lose and you know uh, Super League fans. And Huddersfield go there on uh, Saturday. Mm. Uh, look, if Toulouse are going to stay up, the crowd need to get behind them early on because I think Lee suffered last season. No crowd at the beginning. Mm. You know, Lee Sports Village could have been a fortress. So Toulouse need to turn that into a fortress and get some results on the board early out of here if they're going to stay up. If they can, absolutely. I mean, they, that, that should be, I think, their, their number one aim to win all the home games if they possibly can and, and get the crowd on their side. I mean, I hate to, I hate to end this programme on a bit of a downer. I'm, I'm fearful for Toulouse, I really am. Uh, I noticed that Mark Corellia has gone on social media today saying he's training the house down and uh, he's looking to forward lose, yeah. to playing in the Super League because he's done it in the Championship for so many years. That's great news for them. Please God, they finish the season off, Toulouse. The, you know, we have no more of this COVID. We have no more vaccination problems. And it's, as you say, it's not the club's fault. It is a result of France as a nation, their stance on the, the, the coronavirus, that we have suffered the pandemic. I just hope we haven't got another yeah. Toronto on our hands here. I'm keeping my fingers and everything crossed. And Scully, uh, Huddersfield, Chris Hill and Theo Farge, you know all about. Yeah, uh, two ultimate professionals, aren't they? Obviously, Theo, you know, I thought was a, was a big loss to, to St. Helens. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of Theo. And obviously, Chris Hill, you know, what he'll do, he'll, he'll, drive, he'll drive standards at, at, at Huddersfield, you know, from uh, ultimate professional. And I think he was coming back into some really, really good form as well with, with Warrington. Um, so a big signing for them. I'm going to get the fellas' prediction in a moment. But get on the Super League website and join in the Predictor competition now quite a few have done this already uh the winner who have you been predicting well no surprise you'll be happy with this scully 43 percent of you are predicting the saints to do it four times on a row look at that leads 16 percent who's going to win the league leaders well that's even bigger for the saints 57 percent of you are saying that the saints are going to win the league leaders shield of course they didn't last year it was the catalan dragons and relegation 62% are saying Toulouse will be relegated. Get on the Super League website, get involved in the predictor very quickly. There's so much rugby league to enjoy this weekend. Uh, starting, well, Thursday night, that's when your weekend starts now, isn't it? St. Helens versus Catalan <laughs> Dragons here at 8 o'clock. Friday, Hull KR versus Wigan, also live on Sky. And then on Saturday, lunchtime at 12.30, it's Leeds versus Warrington, live on Channel 4. On the Sportsman, we've got Lock Lane versus Rochdale Hornets in the Bretford Challenge Cup. And at 7 o'clock on Saturday, Toulouse versus Huddersfield. Right then. Um, this is the most stupid question I've asked for the last six years. Scully, and who's going to win? Wow. Yes, <laughs> who's going to win the Mark, grand final? Mark the rest of the world's with me. <laughs> well, no, Everybody. only uh, only forty three percent. Forty three percent of the world. Yeah, um, <laughs> yes, I, I think Saints. You, it's staying here. Common common sense says that, that they're the best team going into this this season. So we can only go off that. Um, I think it will be a tougher season than ever and Christian spoke about it, all the teams have strengthened and I think it will probably be one of the best Super League seasons we've had in a long time. I wasn't allowed to ask you when you worked for Sky. No. I am now. Uh, right, who's uh, going to win the uh, okay. Super League? Uh, dark Horses, I think Castleford. Got my fingers crossed for Lee Radford. Um, go on, I'm going to say it. Warrington. <laughs> Warrington. It's it will be their year in 2022. There you go. Warrington will win the grand final. You hear it here first. Gents, thanks for coming in. And these fellows will be with us throughout the season. 7 o'clock 
on a Wednesday, we're going to be on the Sportsman's Rugby League channel with our show, The Last Tackle. So join us on a Wednesday. But it's all about this, and it'll be handed out on the 24th of September at Old Trafford. Can St Helens make it four in a row, or could it be someone else? We'll find out at the end of September. Thanks for watching. Bring on the early mornings. The long Boston training sessions. Bring the new ideas, the new era, the new talents. Be the difference. The home advantage. The away following. Be ready to have your breath taken away. And that's what Mikey Lewis can do. We don't believe in impossible. George Williams, his first contribution for Warrington. We're unstoppable. They cannot oh. stop this man. They cannot stop him. Bring the fire. Bring the heart. It's time to get loud. Let's go. Because this is Bedford Super League. Bring it on.